Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio, so today we're going to be looking at Lapras. You see, very recently, might have been earlier today, might have been a day or two ago, depending on when the videos went up, I showed you a video about the new Del Mize. And when I showed you the video about the new Del Mize, I told you how it hits weakness against Lapras, but nobody's playing Lapras. Well, it turns out the lovely Joe Bernard from Omnipoke, he's proving us wrong. And in fact, people are playing Lapras. And in fact... Lapras just went and won a League Cup this past weekend, piloted by the lovely Joe Bernard. So I thought, you know what? If it's gone and won a League Cup, we should probably make a video about it. So, Lapras then. The thing is, Lapras used to have Aqua Patch. And between Aqua Patch and Max Elixir, you could make a really turbo Lapras list. Problem is, we still have Aqua Patch, but we've lost Max Elixir, and Lapras has lost a lot of the speed it once has. The good news is, Dragon Majesty has just been released. And in Dragon Majesty, we've had a couple of cards that redress the balance quite nicely. Starting off, we need to look at Lapras. Lapras is the main boy from this attack, and there are a couple of things I really like about it. The weakness to grass is actually nice. Yeah, sure, Down Mize will hit it for weakness, and anyone playing a Vikavolt deck is probably playing Dalmise. But anyone not playing a Vikavolt deck probably isn't playing any kind of grass Pokemon at the moment. So you're fine. You'll probably be alright. So that's quite nice. 190 HP is on the high side for your basic GXs. And the first attack for one Water Energy draw three cards. You're going to be playing four Lapras. Or at least three. So you're going to start with it in a good amount of games. So being able to then draw three cards for a single energy means you're going to set up quite nicely in the early game. The GX attack is fine, 100 damage plus paralysis meh. But Blizzard Burn is what really excites me here. 160 damage for free energy. Then you whack a choice band on there. And all of a sudden you're doing 190. And that is the key number for getting rid of stuff like Rayquaza, like Boswell, etc. And to be perfectly blunt, yes, Boswell can one-hit KO you with a choice band, but you should be faster than Boswell. You should be outspeeding it. So it doesn't really matter. They're relying on B-String, and by the time they get access to B-String, you're up by two prizes, and you're probably just going to end up winning the game, which is rather nice. The other main attacker we have here is Volcanian Prism Star, a card that outside of Lapras is decidedly meh, but inside of Lapras is basically busted. The ability allowing you to discard a water energy from your hand and then make your opponent switch their active is really nice. Yes, they get to choose their active, but they still have to switch, it's still disruptive, and as we're going to see in a minute, discarding water energy is actually something you need to do a lot here. And then for free energy, 100 damage plus 20 to each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So something like a Zoroark, for instance, has got 210 HP and would usually be outside Lapras's range. You use one attack from Volcanian Prism Star here, and then all of a sudden they've all got 190 HP and oh look, you can KO them all. You're doing absolutely fine. Or you can just spread with this a few times and you're rolling. And then everything is in range of Lapras. Lapras is a great attacker. And it's great for using Collect in the early game. But if you can get a couple turns of Volcanian Prism Star off, you can then sweep with Lapras. And one thing I love about Volcanian Prism Star, it's 160 HP single energy Pokemon. So your opponent doesn't want to KO it because there's a lot of resources needed to take out something which only gives up one prize. But if they don't, It'll just wreck them. Now you're also playing an Orangaroo here for a little bit of draw power. You're playing Tapu Lele to search out your supporter cards. None of that should be particularly surprising. But what's really awesome here is Quagsire. Quagsire is amazing, ladies and gentlemen, in this particular deck. Because it allows you once per turn... Oh, no, wait. As often as you like per turn to move a Water Energy from one of your bench Pokemon... To your active Pokemon. 
So this is where Aqua Patch becomes just completely busted. You Aqua Patch onto whatever you like, then you can move it into the active using Quagsire. You've still lost Max Elixir, which is still horrible. But at least now you get the energy straight onto the active, which will really, really help you out here. You don't have the energy acceleration you used to have. You don't have enough energy acceleration, and that's really quite sad. But you can move it onto the Pokemon you want to, and that is absolutely key. Quagsire allowing you to move all the energy to the active is awesome. And it kind of makes up for the loss of Max Elixir in a way. But not fully. We need experience share. Experience share is absolutely crucial to this deck's success. When you have a Pokemon KO'd, you get to take a basic energy from that Pokemon, as long as it's in the active, and move it to the Pokemon with experience share attached. You don't have Max Elixir anymore. You don't have the same energy acceleration you did pre-rotation. But with Quagsire moving the energy around, and this allowing you to keep your energy on the board, you're actually kind of making up for it. You can put an experience share on your Tapu Lele, and then Tapu Lele keeps getting energy, but every time an energy goes to Tapu Lele, Quagsire can move it off. It's as often as you like during your turn. So it doesn't matter where the experience share is. And this is crucial because it means the experience share can go on stuff like Tapu Lele on the bench. So your Lapras can have a choice band. It's a way of having Lapras with a choice band, but still getting the benefit of experience share. And the crucial thing is here that Field Blower wrecks experience share. Field Blower ruins it. But Field Blower should be seeing a dip in play, and it very much is at the moment. Garboda used to be one of the main reasons to play a Field Blower. It would turn off abilities, so you need to play it if you were at all relying on abilities. Well, it's fine, you don't need to worry about it anymore, but because, well, you know, people aren't playing Garboda, so Field Blower's going away now. And Floatstone has gone away, which was another reason people would play Field Blower. Sure, Choice Band's still seeing a fair amount of play. And sure, Field Blower still gets rid of stadiums like Brooklyn Hill, and especially Shrine of Punishment. But it's just seeing a dip in play, making something like Experience Share so much better. The other new card from Dragon Majesty in here is Switching Raft. I know, right? Switching Raft is actually seeing a fair amount of play. Or at least in this deck, Switching Raft becomes amazing. I've already told you how we don't currently have access to Floatstone. So that's a little bit more awkward for getting your Pokemon out of the active. The great thing about Switch Raft is... Switch Raft, not Switching Raft. Apparently they've changed it. I'd first Switching Raft. Switch your Water Active with one of your Bench... If you do heal 30 damage from the Pokemon, you move to the bench. It's literally a switch and a potion in one. It's kind of cool. I really like this card. It works beautifully in this deck. And you can see this is the rare example of a deck that has actually been made because of Dragon Majesty. And I really do think it's Quagsire that makes this deck roll. Losing Max Elixir really hurts. But between Experience Share and Quagsire, maybe, maybe, we can fix it. Now, in terms of the other trainers here, there's nothing too amazing. Obviously, you're playing Brooklet Hill because you're relying on water Pokemon. So, that's a great stadium just to search them all out. Obviously, you're playing Ultra Ball here because it's the best Pokemon search that we've got at the moment. Rescue Stretcher is here to recover your Pokemon, which is always nice. You've got a... Combination of Cynthia and Lily as the draw supporters. Like I've been saying in many, many, many of my videos, Copycat still not seeing any play. Obviously, we've got Guzma here just to grab Pokemon off the bench and KO them. And then there's a couple slightly more unusual cards. We do see Professor Kakui here. Draw two cards, do an extra 20 damage. Why do we play Professor Kakui? Really simply because although you can use Volcanion, there's still stuff that's just out of reach for KOs. But Kakui will get you that Zoroark KO, etc. Hopefully you can use Volcanian Prism Star, but Kakui's got your back if you can't. And then Acrobike here. Acrobike, 
I mean, look, we've got Volcanian Prism Star to put energy in the discard. And for Aqua Patch, we need energy in the discard. But sometimes you won't have that. It'll get KO'd. It'll be prized, whatever. But also, Acro Bike, as well as discarding water energy, is just draw power. It's item-based draw power. And between stuff like Collect and Acro Bike, you should be able to get rolling. Huge thank you and shout out to Joe Bernard for playing this deck and showing us something awesome. And huge shout out to Complexity Card Gaming, his team, for sharing this over on Facebook. Cheers, Complexity. You guys rock. And I'm a fan of many of Complexity's members. Go, Complexity. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think. Do you think Lapras is legit? Do you think Lapras is back? Or do you think Joe's just that one guy who can make Lapras work? Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but do be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.